If you look at 5G, it basically does connections not through a central nervous system, right? But it's like, you know, B to C and C to D. Can we build it without Huawei in, in Europe? It's possible to build it with, without Huawei, but as you said in your opening, it's really expensive if carriers are going to do that or if operators are going to have to take Huawei equipment out of its existing networks. And that's the point. People have been using Huawei equipment without probably any kind of political fanfare or issues for years and years on the existing 3G and 4G networks. So yes, you could use alternative vendors, Nokia, Ericsson, for example, for your infrastructure for 5G, but you're probably going to have to rip out you know, equipment that you've been using for years, so that is going to cost you quite a bit. Yeah, and it's different in the U.S., right? It's, I mean, it's the same sort of, I guess, setup in the U.S., in that if you're going to have to take out Huawei equipment, or even if you never used it, you're going to be investing more in competitors' equipment, because Huawei has traditionally been cheaper to install, and they had been researching earlier and sort of, you know, with greater technology innovation than their competitors, is what they've said. So what's the state of play? So we're, we're having it rolled out, I think, in, a, in certain parts in the UK today, but very yeah. minimally. Yeah. I think it's like a couple of stations in London, a couple of places here and there. Yeah. E When's the full rollout? Yeah, EE so. has announced uh, six cities as of today, and then the idea is to launch another 10 cities probably within the next 12 to 18 months. Mm -hmm. Full coverage, though, hasn't been promised until 2022, 2023, in terms of really using the full potential of 5G.